Hello and welcome. My name is Ian Jack and I'm a lecturer in clinical pharmacy and pharmacy practice at Ulster University. And today, as part of the virtual learning series, we are going to be looking at managing your medicines at home. I'm sure that many of you have taken this opportunity to do a clear out of the cupboards over this period of lockdown. And perhaps in the part of your clear out that you've assembled a whole host of medicines again that have been uh, lying around and you're wondering uh, what you're going to do with them. So we're going to speak about that uh, briefly today. So the first thing that you've got to do is if you've got a, a whole host of these medicines again is to look and find the expiry date. The expiry date can usually be found uh, at the bottom of the packet perhaps in the end of a box on the uh, label of a, a bottle around the, the neck of the bottle and it's important then that you actually find what that expiry date is and then take action. Why? Because you may then discover that the medicine is out of date. If the medicine is out of date you might say well can't I just take it? And what we would suggest is if you do have medicines that are out of date um, please just get rid of them. Don't just put them into the uh, wheelie bin but put them into a bag and take them to your local pharmacy who can dispose of them uh, appropriately. Why is this important? Well, if uh, you have an out-of-date medicine, it may have become chemically unstable. It may look okay, but it might have become chemically unstable over a period of time. It may start to have broken down a little bit and um, it may be harmful. It may just not be as uh, effective uh, as it once was. And if you've got a medicine, especially one that isn't in a sealed blister pack and you've got to open up the cap and things, it may have become contaminated uh, over a period of time. Not only that, that there is a medicine, we've got one here. This is a prescription only one, but again, it is available for purchase pharmacy uh, called chloramphenicol. And this chloramphenicol is uh, a medicine that if you look at the expiry date, you think it's going to last for a long period of time. However, that in closer inspection of the box, it does say that please discard 28 days uh, after opening. So it's important that if you've got a, a medicine at home and it's got some specific ones that the expiry date can change once the packet has been uh, opened. Not only that, that there are sometimes certain storage requirements that are necessary. These chlorophenicol ones, for example, have got to be kept in the fridge. So if you have gone around and you've discovered in a cupboard somewhere some chlorophenicol eye drops, then it's important then that if it's not been stored appropriately, it's not been, it's been a while since it's been opened in excess of, of four weeks, again, please just uh, discard. Similarly, we've forgot here on inhaler, and what you might find is that Somebody at some point in time within the household may have been prescribed an inhaler and um, because of I'm feeling a little bit chesty, a little bit a little bit wheezy. And it might be easy then to think, well, someone else in the household is feeling a bit chesty wheezy, I want to give them the inhaler to use. And again, we would caution against this. Why? Because a specific medicine has been prescribed to a specific patient for a specific purpose. It may be that a doctor would choose to prescribe a similar type product for somebody else, but we've got to allow the doctor to diagnose this. We shouldn't necessarily go and just take a, a, a medicine, and we should certainly not give a medicine that has been prescribed for someone to give it to a third party. So again, please don't do this, and we would advise uh, against this. So other medicines uh, that you might uh, find, uh, we've got uh, a head lice uh, treatment here, many different head lice uh, type treatments available. And these head lice type treatments, if it says lotion, may contain an alcoholic base to them. And what does this mean? It just means that if someone has got a broken scalp, that if you apply that, it may just become a little bit more irritated. So just be careful with that. Also, if you've got someone that is asthmatic, again, sometimes the alcohol can irritate the back of the windpipe and so again just be aware uh, of that if we're going to, to, to give that to, to uh, people. You may have discovered uh, medicine uh, like this, decongestant type uh, tablets 
and you would use this obviously if you feel a little bit uh, bunged up but again uh, we need to be uh, careful these kind of uh, medicines that if you are on blood pressure type uh, medications that these ones can increase your your blood pressure so it's important that if you are thinking about taking medicines that you read the leaflet uh, that is uh, with it appropriately or if you're purchasing it go to the pharmacy and speak to the pharmacist who's going to be in a better place to uh, advise you other medicines uh, that you might find are um, pain relief type medicines i've got one here and this is uh, ibuprofen and this is what we refer to as a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug in the trade and you've got to take care with these type ones for a couple of different reasons the first one is that uh, these uh, medicines can irritate the stomach uh, slightly so if you do have maybe uh, stomach problems uh, a little bit of an ulcer or something like that again you don't want to be taking uh, these also that sometimes that if you're on other type uh, medication as well that these ones may interact with it some people are on methotrexate C for uh, rheumatoid arthritis so if you are on any other kind of medication again just speak to the pharmacist before you take something that again you're available just to purchase over the counter buy in the supermarket or something like that uh, these ones are only available at the pharmacy and are using for migraine but if you've had heart problems if you've had maybe a previous heart attack maybe some mini stroke don't uh, be taking these um, and speak to your if you are suffering migraines speak to the uh, pharmacist or indeed uh, maybe then go in and speak to the, the doctor uh, also some people uh, may suffer from urinary tract infections and again have picked up um, a bottle of this potassium citrate and we take care with these as well why because uh, this one's of course obviously this isn't the label potassium certain medications such as uh, blood pressure med ones ACE inhibitors we call them enolapril captopril they have got the potential to increase the body's level of potassium some diuretics they're called potassium sparing diuretics and these are ones that will help get rid of fluid out of you but you'll actually keep potassium and if you take that as well as something like this you may then increase your body's level of potassium as well so again we want to be quite careful with, with what we're doing these medicines allergy tablets sleeping tablets some travel sickness tablets you might think again it's a bit broad a broad range but all of them have got something in common it's they've got what's called an, an antihistamine and more specifically a sedating antihistamine which again is going to mean that you're going to feel a little bit more tired so if you're on medication that's making you feel tired anyway these ones may make you feel extra tired and so be careful with that um, if you're using it also some gentlemen if you've got an enlarged prostate if we've got glaucoma we need to be careful uh, with uh, the use of uh, these as well because they can exacerbate uh, those conditions we've got um, skincare type medication here clotrimazole uh, cream and uh, wart uh, remover it says on the, the packet that people with poor circulation diabetics shouldn't be uh, using this because again it may start to burn the skin and if you don't have your poor circulation you, you can't necessarily feel it it may cause some damage to the feet some medications like this can be used uh, for thrush as well but um, take care with the uh, ages of it that if you're a lady and you're uh, older than 60 years this kind of condition should only be treated by the doctor you shouldn't actually uh, go to the pharmacy and use these uh, medicines uh, your, yourself we've got a cough bottle here um, one that is used to suppress a cough so again very being very careful um, with uh, asthmatics and again the kind of medicine that is uh, within this is uh, a weak uh, opioid but it may cause that increased sedation if you're already on some medication that causes sedation so again take care um, with uh, those and finally uh, we've got an antacid type uh, medication 
two things we've got to look out for um, so with them that sometimes that they can be pretty high in sodium so if you're on blood pressure medication you've had previous instances of heart disease or you're told to keep your sodium level to a minimum again take care but also, there are certain medications that rely on acidic stomach pH, a low pH. And these type of medications, or antacid type medications, will increase the pH of the stomach. And so sometimes that you maybe have a, a medicine and you're messing with EC after it for an enteric coat. This then can maybe start to be digested in the stomach instead of the small intestine because of that. So again, if you're on other medications, um, just make sure if it says about using antacid type medication as well. So thank you for joining me just for a brief overview of the kind of medicines that we've got in the home and thinking about how it is that we would use them. Thank you now and goodbye.